Well, welcome to Weekly Wisdom. Our theme today is trust determines your trajectory. Where you place your trust, where I place my trust, it determines the trajectory of our life. Our lives kind of follow after the things we put trust in. And if you don't trust something, you tend to flee from it. When you trust something, you lean into it. And so listen to Proverbs chapter 3, verses 5 through 8. Maybe one of the most, most famous portions of the book of Proverbs. But listen to these words. Trust in the Lord with all your heart, and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways submit to Him, and He will make your paths straight. Do not be wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and shun evil. This will bring health to your body and nourishment to your bones. There's a clear picture here that we can choose. Am I going to trust in God's ways, God's truth, God's direction, or my own smarts, my own abilities, my own skills? Where do I place my trust? And think about it. If I put all my trust in myself and what I can do, that's going to set a certain course for my life. If I put my trust in God and His Word and His wisdom, that's going to change the trajectory of my life and where I go and what drives me. So in verse 5, we're called to put full trust in God. I hope and pray that you live in such a way that, that you so trust God that His ways are the things you want to pursue. And then in verse 5, it's kind of flipped upside down. Don't lean on your own abilities, your own intellect, your own wisdom. We can try to figure everything out for ourselves. This is not an invitation to be stupid. It's not an invitation to not use your brain. That's not the point. The point is our own abilities, our own perspective compared to God's, ours is folly and God's is wisdom. But at the end of the day, we have to choose. Just pause for a minute and ask yourself, in most situations I face in life, is the first thing that comes to my mind is how would God lead me through this and looking to his word? Or is the first thing that comes to your mind, I'll figure it out. The way you answer that question will, help, will really determine the course you take in life. And then in verse 6, there's this call simply to have submission to God's paths. This is key. We submit to God's paths. I remember Sherry and I when we started dating. Sherry and I have been married 38 years now, but we've known each other for 40 years. Those first two years when we were dating and then the year we were engaged, we had to make a decision. Our way, our paths, our wisdom, or God's paths and God's wisdom. And we faced what almost every dating and engaged Christian couple faces. That God's word says, refrain from physical intimacy until you're married. And most Christian people go, yeah, I know what it says. I know that God says that's the best way to live. But you know what? My drives are strong. We're going to be married someday. And off we go into our own choice, and our own direction in our physical intimacy. Sherry and I battled for two years. The first year, the first year we were dating, we actually lived 2,000 miles apart. And that really helped in terms of temptation. 2,000 miles does a lot to keep you out of trouble. When I, when I moved back to California, we had an entire year where all the rationalizations as a human being went through my mind. We're going to be married soon anyways. What's a piece of paper anyways? Just, you know, we're married in our hearts. You know, I went through all those things. But we continued to just battle through that to the point where on our honeymoon night, it was the first time that we were intimate in the way that God has designed a man and woman to be. And can I tell you, there's something wonderful about knowing, and in, in our case, neither of us had been intimate with any other person before. And so on our honeymoon night, it was the first time we experienced that for each of us. That's God's design. And, you, and I know a lot of you are thinking right now, yeah, great for you, but that, that's nobody else in the world. It doesn't work that way. It can. And in every area of life, we get to choose. The point is this. We can follow God's ways or follow our ways. If we follow our way, it doesn't mean that God doesn't love us, but it does mean we miss out on some of the joys that come when we walk in the ways of the Lord. And then it's not by my wisdom that I live, but there's this this line, the fear of the Lord. The fear of the Lord isn't a terror that drives you away from God. It's an absolute confidence in the awe and glory of God that drives us to live for Him. And, and to understand there's consequences when we don't, that God as a loving parent will discipline the children He loves. And so we can walk in that fear of the Lord and then basically to say the best way to live my life is walking in the ways of the Lord. Here's my encouragement to you. Memorize Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5. Commit it to memory and keep it locked in your heart and your mind. And hear that call to trust in the Lord with all your heart and to lean not on your own understanding. Dear God, this is our prayer. 
that we will live lives of trust in you, of trust in your word, of trusting the leading of your Holy Spirit, that we would not rely on our own insight. Lord, that we would use our minds, yes, that we would, that we would exercise our minds and, and study well and learn all we can to live in this world. But at the end of the day, if there's a push between what I would see is right and what you say is right, may we submit to you every single time. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Blessings on you as you walk in the wisdom of the Lord.